Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level chemistry for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of energetics, and in particular, on calorimetry. Hi, I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level chemistry with our helpful revision resources tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button, and whilst you're watching, please leave any comments down below about anything you're unsure of. If it's your first time watching, make sure to let us know so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the video. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson two of four in this tutorial, covering calorimetry. This is the second video in our series of four lessons on the topic of energetics. In the previous tutorial, we looked at enthalpy changes of reactions. We now know that enthalpy change reactions all require standard conditions, and we can explain the difference between exothermic and endothermic reactions. Here are the key learning objectives for this session. First, we will look at calculating energy transfers experimentally, then practice calorimetry, and finally look at experimental errors. Here are the AQA specification points for this section. Feel free to pause the video now and read through them before we begin. The first specification point is to look at an equation for calorimetry. Delta T, shown here, is the temperature change of the water or solution. The units of this are measured in Kelvin. Here, there is an increase in temperature from 30 degrees C to 40 degrees C. This means that the reaction must be exothermic and the heat is given out to the water. The amount of energy needed to increase the temperature by 1 degree Celsius varies dependent on the mass of the liquid and the type of the liquid. However, temperature change doesn't tell us the whole story. Let's recap that again. The amount of heat energy needed to increase the temperature by 1 degree Celsius varies on dependent on factors such as the mass, and the type of liquid. The larger the mass of the liquid, the more heat energy is needed to change the temperature. It takes more heat energy to increase the temperature of this huge bath of water compared to this smaller beaker. Some liquids need lots of energy to increase the temperature by one degree Celsius, whereas others need less. Each liquid has got something called a specific heat capacity. The higher the specific heat capacity of a liquid, the more temperature that is needed. Essentially, the specific heat capacity tells us how hard the liquid is to heat up. These two factors are accounted for in the following equation. We can work out the heat energy transferred in a reaction whether it has been lost or gained. The equation is shown here. It is the change in thermal energy is equal to the mass times the specific heat capacity times the temperature change. Here is the short version of this equation. It's acceptable to use this form in an exam as long as you know what it stands for. Here are the units for this equation. They should be familiar to you, apart from the units for specific heat capacity, which is joules per gram per Kelvin. Let's have a go at filling in this table. First, we'll start off with the symbol Q, which is the term heat energy transferred. It is defined as the heat that is lost or gained.
and it occurs at delta H at a constant pressure. The units for this are joules. Next, we'll look at delta T. We know that this is the temperature change. It's defined as the change of the water or solution. And it's measured in Kelvin. Next, we'll look at mass. This is the mass of the substance undergoing the temperature change. And it will be measured in grams. Finally, we will look at the term C, which stands for specific heat capacity. This is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one Kelvin. The units will be joules per gram per Kelvin. Even though delta T is measured in Kelvin, when calculating the molar enthalpy change, the value will be the same in degrees Celsius, because we're simply measuring the change in temperature. Now let's look at the next specification point, covering specific heat capacity. Usually, you will be given the value for specific heat capacity in the exam question, or in the data booklet of the AQA exam. However, it is useful to remember that the specific heat capacity of water is around 4,200 joules per kilogram per degree C. Now let's look at our final specification point, looking at calculating molar enthalpy change for a reaction. Let's have a go at this exam question. Pause the video here to have a go at it yourself before we explain it step by step. Here is the answer. Let's go through it together. First, we need to write out the equation for specific heat capacity. This is shown as Q equals MC delta T. Now, we need to calculate the temperature change. We have not been told this value in the question, so we need to work it out. So here, we know that the temperature has risen to 65 degrees from 20 degrees. Therefore, her temperature change must be 45 degrees. Now we can use the formula. We have all the numbers that we need now, so we can simply substitute them in. When we give our final answer, it may be more appropriate to give the units in terms of kilojoules. So our formula is delta E equals MC delta T. So we're going to use our mass times 45 times 3200, zero, zero, which is given as the specific heat capacity for concrete up here, which leaves us with an answer of 2880 joules, but it's probably more appropriate to give it in kilojoules, so we'll give it as 2880 kilojoules.
When answers are very large, we need to think about simplifying the units. Here, we converted from joules into kilojoules. Sometimes, the exam question will ask for specific units, but if they don't, just go with the most sensible ones to make life easier. Let's try another practice question. Pause the video now to attempt this by yourself. The answer is shown here. Let's work through it together step by step. First, we need to write out our equation and find out which values we already know. So the equation we would always use would be Q equals MC delta T. So we don't know the value for Q. So that's a question mark. M is equal to 100 grams. C, we've been told, is 4.18 joules per gram per Kelvin. And delta T is going to be equal to 348 minus 293, giving us an answer of 55 Kelvin. Now we can substitute our values into the equation. So we would do Q is equal to 100 times 4.18 multiplied by 55 leaving us with an answer of 22990 joules. Now, we need to convert the value of Q into kilojoules. So we would do 22990 divided by 1000, leaving us with an answer of 22.9 kilojoules. Now we should calculate the total number of moles of ethanol that were burnt off in the reaction. To find the number of moles, we need to use the formula we learnt in a previous video. Moles is equal to mass over MR. So we know that the mass is going to be 2.2. And we know that the MR is 46.1 which was given here. So we simply substitute these numbers in. Giving us an answer of 0 0.047722. Finally, we can calculate the standard enthalpy change of combustion by dividing the value of Q in kilojoules by the number of moles of ethanol burnt. So to work out our standard enthalpy change of combustion, we would do minus 22.9 divided by 0 0.047722, which we found here, giving us an answer of minus 479.85, which we can round off to minus 480 kilojoules per mole to 3SF. We've put a negative sign in front of our last answer because it's an exothermic reaction. We covered this in our last video. Let's try another practice question before we finish. Pause the video now to have a go at it yourself. We'll run through the answers together in the next few slides. The AQA specification doesn't ask you to know this next part, but it often comes up in calorimetry questions. Energy changes that we calculate are often underestimates since there is always energy loss to the surroundings. Here are some reasons why the calculated value may not be accurate. First, the energy could be given off to the surroundings or used to heat the beaker. 
or the reaction may have been incomplete. Alternatively, the specific heat capacity may not have been totally up to date, or the reactants may have been impure. We've now covered all the learning objectives for this lesson. If you're unsure about anything, feel free to skip back to that section of the video and re-watch it. We have now completed Lesson 2. If you liked this video, make sure to catch our latest videos by subscribing down below and leaving a comment on a topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch more videos on our series of A-Level Chemistry or visit our website studymind.co.uk for past paper compilations by topic and specification.